So, what? <laughs> All about making the Wakanda shield. Wakanda. Wakanda. What's happening my fellow geeks and geek -ads? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today marks the final installment of the Captain Without a Country. Today marks episode 6. So today's episode is all about making the final piece in this amazing cosplay puzzle, constructing the Wakanda shield. Now this weekend is the Gold Coast Superhero Weekend and it's been leading up to this point the final reveal of the full cosplay will be this weekend especially in the Superhero Parade on the Sunday that is the 29th that starts at 9am sharp so the parade starts at 9am and at 9.45 I'm going to be having a meet and greet in the Broad Beach Mall where I can meet you guys it's been quite a journey actually from part 1 right up to this episode right up to this weekend it's going to be a phenomenal time guys so if you guys want the full program details and the parade route map and the meet and greet locations you can just visit the links below so let's get to it I have four pieces of 3d printed parts well actually it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten <gasps> 10 3D printed parts that have been stuck together to form four basic shapes. Now, these were 3D printed by my good buddy Benball, you know as Bendable Effects. The file was made by DO3D. I'll leave the link in the video description below where you can check out DO3D's other amazing work. These guys are incredible. They do 3D files of pretty much any pop culture character, mostly like Iron Man, a lot of Marvel stuff, a lot of DC stuff. You can buy the files and then 3D print them straight away. So here is one side of the shield. And obviously it works like a jigsaw puzzle. We've got to piece it together like so. But before we do that, we have to prep the plastic. This is PLA. Now this stuff is a nightmare to work with in terms of sanding and getting it smooth. So the first step is we have to back these parts up with some resin. So I'm gonna be using Supercast today, part A, part B, just brushing it on the back of all four pieces. This is just gonna add a bit of strength and is also gonna help in the bodywork process. So we are gonna go in with some builder's bog and patch up all the seam lines there. We are then gonna go in with a primer filler. This is from Super Cheap Auto. This is basically used on car bodies to get that nice smooth finish. So this is gonna fill in all of the print lines. And then we can go to work sanding, doing all the appropriate work to get it to a nice smooth finish before we move on to painting. Now also just want to put it out there, this is going to be a stationary prop. Maybe sometime down the track I will make a functional one where the front prong kind of flips out. But for the most part this is just going to be a stationary prop. After we paint this piece I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to add the straps and then we're going to call it a day. The cosplay is finally complete. There's one thing in the world that I hate and it's a lot of sanding. Oh man, I'm gonna get like RSI and like bad rotator cuff after this. Regardless of that guys, this is gonna be a fun build. This is gonna be the piece de resistance on this cosplay. So with that being said, let's get to it. Now before I start mixing up the resin, I just put some duct tape down here. So you can see there is quite a bit of a split right there. Um, and that's just the printing process. Just sometimes these things happen where it just skips a little bit. So if I were to brush the resin on without this tape, it would leak straight out and it'd just be a bit of a problem. So it's just one less thing to worry about. Alrighty, here comes the fun part. I've got some 120 grit sandpaper. I also have a sanding block, so 
It's just a matter of sanding away all that excess builder's bog. Try and get it as smooth as possible. Whilst I know I haven't completely filled the seam lines all together, that's when the filler primer is gonna come in handy and fill in those seam lines as well as the uh, print lines. All right, geeks, so far I'm very happy with how this is turning out. We have the main three components glued and filled together. So I'm gonna go back over the back of the main body here with some more resin, just one more seal coat. I won't worry about this piece here. Um, and for the most part, just going back over and sanding away as much as I can, just trying to get some hard shapes going here and getting rid of the seam lines here. So it's gonna be a process of sanding, spraying some more filler primer, sanding, spraying some more filler primer until I get the desired look. And then we can move on to spray painting both pieces a nice matte black. Alright geeks, I'm at a point where I'm very happy with how the sanding has gone and I'm also very happy with how the body of both parts of the shield are looking. It's now time to move on to priming both pieces. Now I know this is a primer filler, but we need a true primer. So this is the flat grey primer that I always use from Rust-Oleum. Once that has fully dried, we're then going to go over the whole two pieces with a flat black also from Rust-Oleum. Once that's done, we can then start to go in to do the detail work. Alright geeks, now that I've let the matte black dry on both pieces of the shield, it's time to go in and start detailing with the silver areas, so the silver looking panels that are on the screen used props. So I've masked off the areas that I'm going to be painting by hand, and also I will be painting by hand the uh, prongs on the side here. Even though majority of this portion of the shield will be covered up by the top half, still want to go in for all that lovely detail there. I'm still umming and ahhing how I'm going to do the purple Wagonda, you know, shock absorb look. But for the most part, this is very straightforward. I'm gonna be using a chrome silver from Model Masters. Once it's dry, we can peel it all off and then we're gonna to get to work doing some dry brushing. Once these panels have dried, I'm then gonna go in and start to dry brush certain areas or along the edges just to emulate some weathering and that the black paint has chipped off, exposing the vibranium underneath.
Okay, for the actual dry brushing, I'm gonna be using a sponge brush. I'm just gonna dab, as you can see, I've already started some of the chrome uh, silver paint from Model Masters across, and we're just gonna pretty much just wisp it back and forth, and it's great. It gives the illusion uh, that stones and rubble have hit the shield. So once I've done the whole piece, I can show you guys some nice close-ups, but for now, it's very straightforward, guys. Just all over the piece, and I'll obviously hit those hard edges, exposing what looks like vibranium underneath the black. Alright geeks, now that the matte black on the back of the shield has dried, we're going to go ahead and lay down some EVA foam. So the reason why we're doing this is when I'm wearing the shield, I'd hate for the matte black to rub off at all on the costume, on my hand, and this just prevents and also adds a bit more comfort. So obviously we're going to do this step before we add the straps and then we can move on to the Wakanda Purple Glow. So to adhere the EVA foam to the back of the shield itself, I'm just going to be using the Selly's Quick Grip Contact Adhesive. You guys know how contact adhesive works. You have to cover both surfaces, let them become tack dry, and then lay down the EVA foam. Alright geeks, it is now time to move on to the handle section of the shield. Now I've already gone ahead and pre-glued down some leather straps here. I just cut these leather straps out. I'm going to be rigging up some Velcro on this side and this side so it's fully adjustable. As for the actual hand grip, I'm going to be using some copper pipe. This is, this is some copper pipe that I've pre-cut with the corner joints. Uh, we still have to solder all these pieces together and I am going to wrap the actual section that I will be gripping it with, with the same leather here. I do have some spare left over. Now in terms of attaching it to the shield, I've actually got some spare foam, some spare EVA foam, the exact same one that we use to back up the back of the shield. I'm just gonna lay it over like so and adhere it on foam to foam so that way it pivots, it moves. Then after that we can move on to the nice Wakanda glow throughout the shield. I've got a very cool spray paint for that. Uh, we do have to do a bit of prep before laying down that spray paint. I'm gonna seal it up and then we're gonna call it a day.
Okay, change of plans. I know I said I was gonna make this adjustable, but actually mounting it from this side to this side is actually the perfect kind of space that I need to slip my hand in. Um, I am gonna go in and reinforce this piece, this piece, and these areas here with some tinted resin, um, just so it really just seals in those two pieces of foam, uh, the leather, the foam, and of course, uh, the print itself. But for the most part, it's comfortable, it fits perfectly. This is on a pivot. Um, yeah, it's perfect. So next step, and the final step, we're gonna move on to the Wakanda Glow. Very sad, the final step in this cosplay altogether is the Wakanda Glow. So what I mean by that is, um, from what I've seen and from what I've read, this shield acts exactly like Black Panther's suit. It absorbs the shock and you see the purple energy that you can expel back out. So there is a very uh, awesome looking promo shot of Chris Evans with two shields and we can see like a purple Wakanda glow around this area and up on some of the panels here. So the only places that are gonna feature this glow are these two panels here and the inner panels and the bottom part of the shield. So the first step, we've got to get this back to a lighter shade, the pieces that we want to be purple. So I'm gonna mask off these areas uh, just with some masking tape and I'm gonna go in, I'm not gonna spray it, but I'm gonna spray this into a cup and dab it on with a brush. This is just a gloss white, but we need a brighter shade to really emulate that Wakanda glow. So the actual purple itself is a translucent spray from Redback, this stuff is really used for racing cars and racing car bodies, stuff like that, like RC cars. So I've been doing some experimenting. Obviously, it's not gonna be that matte. Um, it is gonna be a much more of a gloss, but it just kind of gives that kind of two-tone look to it. And there we have it guys, the Wakanda shield is done and dusted. So the Captain Without a Country cosplay build has unfortunately come to an end. This has been a massive learning curve, it's been an amazing experience. I'm so happy with how the final cosplay has turned out. So this weekend, the full reveal will be at the Gold Coast Superhero Weekend. The following week, I'm gonna put a video up showcasing the full costume in all its glory, a breakdown of each part of the suit and then how to put it on and just how it functions, how it moves. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be a cracker, geeks. Infinity War is out this week. I'm uploading this on a Monday. The movie comes out on a Wednesday here. I'm gonna be seeing it Wednesday morning. I'll have my review up of the film by Wednesday afternoon here in Sydney. So guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Thank you for keeping me company during this journey that is the Captain Without a Country. For those who are heading to the Gold Coast Superhero Weekend, I will see you guys there this week. And wherever you are in the world, geeks, have yourselves a cracker of a day. I hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly. And until next time, geeks and geekheads, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. This thing is seriously addictive and I do not want to take it off.